thank you for all the lovely comments on my first voiceover video that I uploaded earlier in the week. Um, that's really appreciated, so kind, thank you. Um, I've had a few suggestions on some videos with voiceovers that you'd like me to make and one of them was to do some with acrylics. So I thought um, I'd do a focus video on how I tackled this nose. So regardless of um, if I'm working in pastels, acrylics or graphite, I always block in where the nostrils are, the, the line up the middle which tends to be um, on, on most dogs' noses, um, and the, the bottom two sections here just so that I don't lose the, the main shape of the nose. Um, and this I just tend to do with straight black just to block in where these first bits um, need to go. And then I'll start off with adding basically where my basic shadows and highlights are. So here on the nose, the, the darkness seems to almost roll over where the nostrils have got that shape to it. So you'll start off from the nostrils darker and then you'll work your way lighter as you get to the very top section of the nose, which is exactly what I'm doing here. So this is more of a mid-tone that I have mixed some blue in with a grey base because um, being that this was quite a bright day, the nose was reflecting a lot of the blue from the sky. So in the middle of the nose, it's slightly darker, which is why I've added that dark section there. And then either side and to the top is lighter, which is there. That's that light section. And that's where most of the light is bouncing off that part of her face. That's where the main light source is coming from. And here, just reinforcing that shape of the nostrils because you don't want to lose that. I'm using quite a small brush here. I do tend to use more smaller brushes than large regardless of how big the portrait is. It's purely, it's just how I like to work. I like to know that I'm keeping to within my sketch lines and I don't lose anything. So adding these really subtle mid-tones is what will make any portrait, any part of your portrait realistic. Capturing all of that so that it's not just a solid colour all the way over. It's really, really important. And here, just adding some highlights. This part of the nose where it rolls over at the bottom of the nostrils always tends to be a place that catches light. You'll see that on most noses. And it's a layering process. Each layer I add is slightly lighter. When capturing um, the, the detail on a nose, most of the time you're wanting to capture the that wet look, that wet texture. So that is what I would tend to do at the end by adding some really subtle white dots. Again, adding some blue just to reinforce that strong highlight from the sky, that bouncing, the bouncing light. using my finger there just to blend out a bit of the paint. Acrylics dry so fast that it's, it can be quite a, a, a faster process. I used to work in oils. I still have my oil paints but hands down I much prefer working with acrylics. I can get a portrait done much quicker using these rather than oils. The drying time is I find a, a, it can be an advantage for certain things especially people for blending skin tones but I definitely prefer when doing pet portraits to, to work with acrylics. Just my personal preference. So you can see it's really repetitive, just adding more lighter layers, really paying close attention to your reference photo. And sometimes when you're doing these, it makes no sense at all. Your brain is thinking, I know what a nose looks like, I draw it like this, and this is how it's going to look. But it sometimes the shapes and how the light is bouncing off can create some really, really funny shapes. So if you're struggling to capture anything, really, regardless, try and turn your artwork upside down, and then your brain will see it for what it is, rather than thinking of it as, I'm drawing a nose, I'm drawing an eye, an ear, that sort of thing. So it's really important whenever you're working 
with anything pastels, graphite, anything, to have this sheet of glassine, which is this semi-translucent paper that you can see that I'm leaning on. It just means that the oils of your hand will not come into contact with the canvas or the paper and won't smudge anything. So here again, add in another set of highlights. It's a load, a load of layers. That's the key to it. Loads of layers always work from your darker tones and build up. Now I will add some mid tones and I will enforce my darks exactly like what I'm doing here. But it's basically the fundamentals are you start with a dark and then you build up from there. With acrylics, I love glazing. So if you find that you've lightened an area too much, just make a glaze and all I do is I use water, mix down some of my colours, add water and then just with a, a not necessarily this smaller brush, um, I might go with a filbert, I will then just add a really uh, subtle glaze over to dull down those highlights if you have made them too bright. There wasn't anything too harsh on Maisie's nose here. There was no sharp highlights. It was all quite smooth. So that's what I'm doing with my finger there. So when I put the light colour down, I'm dabbing it with my finger to take off some of that paint. This portrait has taken me a long time. I have almost finished it. So I will be making a video from start to finish. That will be a faster time lapse purely because the hours that I've spent on it. But I do plan on breaking it down into sections so I can do some other voiceovers. So if there is any part of this portrait that you want me to um, do a video like what I've done here, slow it down and explain what I'm doing, then pop it in the comments. Um, I can. It, it's got a, a grass at the bottom so I can always do it based on how I do the grass, um, how I do Lexi's ear, which is my spaniel that's going to be next to Maisie. So here adding more subtle details. Just playing really close attention to your reference photo. And you can see here I've used the same brush from start to finish. I haven't I haven't used any different size, it's just the, the same one that I've used. I can tell you what brush it is. It is a round number one. The Daler and Rowney. I'm not overly fussy about what brushes I, I use. I don't really, um, the generic ones work just as well. They're just adding more shadows, capturing where the darks roll over to make sure you get that shape of the nostril. And this video, although it is showing it pretty much from start to finish, I will once the portrait's finished or as I'm working I might notice once the colour around the nose is in that that bit needs to be ever so slightly lighter I need to tweak that bit so but this video shows you that pretty much 99% of it I might just add a detail here and there it might be a slight highlight more to more so to one side but it is pretty much done so this photo just shows you how big this painting is. This is 29 by 21 inches. At the time, I thought it was a great idea, <laughs> but it's taken a long time. So the background's all done with an airbrush, which I may still tweak. But as you can see, from where I started with this video of the nose, I've got so much work to do. I have, fingers crossed, finished it this week. So um, once it's all finished, I'll upload the finished picture to my social media. Um, so if you want to see that, don't don't hesitate to pop over there i hope this video was useful don't forget to subscribe hit the bell button to get notifications of new content and i'll see you soon bye